Hello and welcome to Tea Time with the Word, your reflection for the second Sunday of Lent. And today's readings call us to be open and to listen attentively to the call of God. Now we see that God speaks to us in various ways. And every time we see that God speaks to us through those around us. And that is why we need to be careful and attentive in our dealings with others as well. And therefore today's readings will focus on this theme, especially on our heavenly inheritance of a place and reward in heaven. But before we can delve into today's reflection, let us take a look at the readings of the day. Today's first reading is from the book of Genesis chapter 15 verses 5 to 12 and 7 to 18. The second reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians chapter 3 verses 17 to chapter 4 verse 1 and the gospel is from Luke chapter 9 verse 28b to 36. Now when you read the three readings you may probably ask yourself this question what does today's first reading have in common with the other two readings of the day? Well, to answer this question, we first need to take a step back and we need to realize the context in which today's first reading takes place. Now, the text for Genesis 15 has its context in chapter 12 and therefore, we can go back to chapter 12 and see when God delivers to Abraham the promise of the covenant. And what is the promise? He says that by you all the families of the earth shall bless themselves. Now today's first reading describes the solemn enactment of this covenant between Abraham and God where Abraham symbolizes the inviolability of the covenant by splitting the various animals into two and walking between their carcasses. The desiccated animal remains serve as a potent reminder of what are the spiritual consequences that Abraham would have to face if he had disobeyed God or if he was unfaithful to his oath. Now, Importantly, however, we also see that the Lord repeats in this passage an earlier promise that was given to Abraham, the promise of the land, where it was said, To your descendants I give this land. The promised land of Canaan would become the ancestral heritage of the Jewish people. And if the first reading deals with physical land, we can see that in the second reading and today's gospel, we see that it speaks to us about a land which we will inherit because of our virtues, because of our relationship with God and most importantly, because of our works here on the earth. And therefore we see that as it is said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, our commonwealth is in heaven. St. Paul reminds us that whereas God gave the promise of physical land to Abraham, he gives us the promise of the true land in heaven. Our true homeland is in heaven. And this is the promise that God gives to all Christians, provided they remain faithful to the teachings, provided they follow the gospel values and lead their lives based on what God wants them to do. Today's gospel speaks about the transfiguration, which in turn reminds us that this new world will very much incorporate our physical bodies such that we too will one day share bodily in Christ's glorified state. And as we reflect on today's gospel, we also see that the mountain experience that Jesus had not only helped him 
to understand and listen to his father, but it also helped his disciples. We witness here the power of the prayer of Jesus, which makes his disciples able to listen the voice of the father. If you analyze your, in your own lives, you will realize that each and every one of us have some mountain experiences in our day-to-day -day lives. Namely, in the Eucharist that we celebrate, in the gifts that we receive, in the commitments that we are engaged with and the persons with whom we interact. Now, just as Jesus involved his disciples along with him in praying and thereby enabling them to listen to the voice of the Father, we are also called to recognize the voice of God in and through our prayer and in and through our everyday activities. Not only in the Eucharist, but also when we are working or when we are interacting with one another. And therefore, we can ask ourselves this question. How attentive am I to listening to God's call when God speaks to me through my neighbor, through my companion, through my family members, through my co-workers, etc.? Can I hear God's voice when I'm doing my regular day-to-day -day chores? God is present in everything and he uses various opportunities to communicate things to us. And now we can probably reflect on these questions which would enable us to internalize the gospel passage as well as the first and the second readings and draw fruit from them. Do I always treat my body as a true integral aspect of myself? How can I give greater glory to God by treating my body more like a temple of the Holy Spirit? And as we reflect on the readings of the day, let us ask the Lord for this grace that we may be able to listen to his voice, that we may be able to see God working in and through our neighbors, in and through our friends, colleagues, family members, and that we may follow God's ways that we may follow God's commands so that we too will be able to inherit and become worthy citizens of our homeland in heaven. Amen.